Hello, welcome to the Year 10 information presentation on the new GCSEs uh, systems coming up over the next two years in Year 10 and Year 11. The purpose of this session is to try and give pupils and parents more of an understanding of the two-year perspective of the GCSE courses, what to expect in terms of uh, key dates and expectations going forward in, in terms of supporting your son to try and get the best possible outcomes at the end of Year 11. So the biggest thing to be aware of in terms of this new approach over the last five years of the, the new GCC systems, it's now a two year perspective. It's a linear course. Every single course is linear, where that means there's no internal assessments going through uh, towards uh, the outcome of the GCC. All the assessments are done at the end of year 11, other than the near coursework, which will be undertaken at certain times over the next 18 months. So there's some things that we need to be aware of to try and maximize the progress and the achievement now that are gonna fundamentally increase the positive choices that can be had uh, in terms of sixth form and further education. So year 10 is absolutely vital to hit the ground running to try and get as much good progress and positive impacts in terms of behavior uh, and motivational issues to set them set the pupils up for outcomes positively in year 11. So there's a couple of key things going forward and key dates. In November uh, 2022, there will be year 11 sixth form open evening. That seems quite a, a long time away at the moment. However, it's gonna go really, really quickly over the next year or so. And that's gonna be fundamental choices looking at A level within within the next year and then further education outside of Borden uh, potentially. So to hit the ground running and have an, uh, an understanding of what the processes are going forward to set people's up for that, um, that those, those choices in the next year or so, it's gonna be really, really important. So as we said, that this, the new GCSEs are all two year linear examination courses. So what that means is we need to have consistently good effort from now until the end of year 11 to maximize the opportunities to uh, master as many uh, positive impacts on progress as possible. So that's gonna be really fundamental in terms of how your son is organized and how he keeps his notes and how prepared and how much reflection and revision is going on uh, time and time again in order to maximize understanding. Unfortunately, the days seem to be gone where it's possible to cram at the very end and do uh, five weeks of, of hard revision uh, and cram as much of the, the knowledge-based um, co concepts of the courses into the revision as possible. That, there's so much uh, content to, to cover now and it, it's, it's become more difficult compared to the old systems, where actually we need to try and play that long game and understand that little steps and regular revision practices are gonna become really, really important at maximizing opportunities to learn and use these in exam assessments. So things that you can be doing at home as a student and how you can support your son is really, really important. So regular uh, revisiting of notes, as it says there's much greater emphasis on memory and the ability to recall facts and figures and key bits of information. So in terms of actually accessing systems and getting a mindset in place that makes sure that you're on top of the work as a, as a pupil and how you can support your son as a parent, it's making sure that homework tasks are regularly completed and consistently met in terms of deadline, opportunities to practice past paper questions or create revision resources and go through differing systems of how to revise as a pair uh, with, with a friend or as a parent and a pupil approach. It's going to be really, really important to look at reflecting on um, areas of weakness, potentially, and filling in the gaps as you go to maximise the opportunity to learn and recall as much knowledge as possible. So this goes back to this element of what is your mindset as a pupil? So do you have a fixed mindset where you believe that intelligence is fixed and you're either born clever or you're not? Or do you have a growth mindset where you feel that this is a process and that you believe that intelligence can be developed. So hopefully you're gonna be of the opinion that you're a growth mindset and you're gonna actually accept and enjoy the challenges. Be aware that these GCSE courses are all rigorous. They are all complex. They are going to take some effort and some hard work. You are going to have um, obstacles that, that you struggle to overcome, but it's how you bounce back from those and you learn to respond to feedback ask questions from your peers and your your, uh, your staff in order to understand this is going to be a difficult process but the help is there and if you put in consistent effort and uh, actually adopt this growth mindset the progress and the outcomes will be positive in the future so with that that mindset we try to look at what we call a vespa mindset and we're introducing this at gcc 
and A level, but the VESPA stands for vision, effort, systems, practice, and attitude. So your vision, what is your vision for the future? Can you see yourself coming back to Bourne and Grammar 6 form, or are you gonna to go to look at doing uh, a um, further education uh, and higher education at university and other sixth form areas? Uh, but are you gonna get in place what you want to achieve out of your GCSEs, every single subject? Are you setting your sights on fours? But realistically, can you push yourself to look at the fives, sixes and sevens that people of uh, grammar school ability and people that are in this school can achieve? Have you, are you putting in the adequate amount of effort? So for example, the diagram shows what hard work would look like. If you're scaling your independent study and level of work out of 10, most people set, set themselves at about a six, but at certain time periods throughout the year or throughout the next two years, are you going to push up to the eight and the nine? And then the opportunities um, where you need to rest and recover in the school holidays, for example, then you can drop it down to a two to a three. But then where we're in school and out school inside of term time and in opportunities to progress and revise and reflect and reinforce the expectations and the knowledge requirements for each course, can you push it up to a, to a six as a bare minimum, but then pushing into the seven, the eight, and the nines in terms of your effort? Looking at systems, what is your method? What are the methods that can be adopted to put you in the best position to maintain and maximize the knowledge and the application to questions and the practice? What are the methods that you are going to use as an individual? as a family, as a group of people with friends in terms of practice and revising and making sure that you're extracting as much information and knowledge um, from your courses as possible. And the last one is attitude. Are you going to be in this positive growth mindset attitude or are you going to slip regularly into this negative attitude, which means there's going to be many hurdles to overcome over the next two years? So as we said, with this two year linear course, you are going to uh, actually, in, in some courses, have to sit uh, all of the exams at the very end of year 11. But some of these courses, such as art, DT, ICT and GCSE PE, will have what is called a NIA, a non-examined uh, assessment. So that is effectively coursework. And that can equate to a percentage of your overall outcome. So it's vital that the, the NIA work is of the highest quality and as much effort uh, and preparation goes into that near to maximize the best opportunity at getting a real positive outcome for yourselves. But the shift has become more rigorous. So for example, in GCCPE, the proportion of the coursework has changed from 60%, which includes the practical and the written coursework, to around 30%, which means that the onus is more heavily um, influenced by the two exams or the number of exams that you sit uh, at the end of year 11. So that's where the systems need to be in place to make sure that we are maximizing every opportunity to prepare for these final exams as possible. So in terms of numbers, parents might be aware that uh, the number system has come in over the last five years and they've replaced the old letters. But effectively, if you're looking at that diagram, it will show you what the numbers equate to in terms of the old letter grades. So realistically for our boys, we're looking at fours upwards, ideally fives, sixes, sevens, eights, and in, and in some, some cases into the nines. But the four is effectively a low C grade, a low pass. Uh, a five will be a solid pass. A six is, is a, a high B effectively. And then into the, uh, the upper uh, echelons of these number systems, uh, a seven is a low A, eight is a solid A towards the A star, and then a grade nine is effectively an A star star, the highest possible grade that you can get out of GCSE. So you're looking at the top 3% of the country would achieve grade nine. So in terms of the board and expectation, we're looking at fives minimum, particularly across the board for all subjects. People should have that motivation to achieve a five at the very least in the vast majority of their GCSE outcomes. And that's gonna be played out in a couple of different ways because some subjects, for example, maths, sciences and languages can enter pupils into a foundation tier or a higher tier, depending on previous assessments. And those decisions will be made over the next year or so, and people will be people will be made very, very aware of the tier that they are of entry that they're going to be put forward to. So the foundation tier effectively allows you to get a maximum of a grade five, and then a higher uh, the higher tier 
uh, looks at you trying to get a minimum of a grade three towards the grade nine. So if you are in a foundation tier, that does not mean that you should not uh, accept the higher brackets of pushing for that grade five. That's certainly not out of reach. What it does mean is that there's going to be more support, focus, intervention tailored to try and get that grade five. The higher tier allows people to push on from that grade five and then really show off their knowledge and their skill set up towards the grade sevens, the eights, and the grade nines. And those decisions are, ma are made uh, via heads of department, and the heads of department will be in communication with parents over next year to outline exactly which tier um, of entry your son will be involved in for the subjects of maths, sciences, and languages, if that's something that your son has chosen. So the whole point of these GCSEs is to look at what the next step is. It doesn't seem so long ago that people were in year nine and were selecting their GCSEs, and already we're talking about post-16 opportunities. But this, these next two years go ridiculously quickly. As we said, in November 2022, there will be a sixth form open evening to advertise what the board and grammar sixth form offers in terms of A-level choices and beyond. So that can then progress to university or degree apprenticeships, um, and then, obviously, uh, people have the option of going towards uh, other sixth forms or other colleges. But we want to try and keep as many uh, Borden boys in year 10 and year 11 back in year 12 and year 13 because we have a, a good track record of pushing pupils towards A-levels and then degree apprenticeships and university. So if that's something you are interested in, and hopefully boys are starting to think about that even in the beginning of year 10, the, the entry requirements for our R6 form at Borden Grammar School are five GCSE grades between grades five to nine, including fives at English and maths. The A-level subjects, hopefully, that you choose, you're looking realistically to do, to do well and have a chance of having solid grades and beyond at A-level, you're looking at a grade six or a grade seven minimum in the subjects that you choose for A-level. So that's why we're going to encourage, and there's many conversations with heads of department and with subject teachers where conversations are already happening about what the impact of uh, the choice choosing that subject at GCSE and A level can lead to in the future. But hopefully, most boys are going to look to come back to Board and Grammar Six form. As we say, the, the entry requirements to meet those demands are a minimum of five GCSE grades between grade five and grade nine. And we we often see pupils. We are, we're aware we've got an old building um, and people are attracted by other sixth form areas that are brand new shiny buildings and don't really look at the quality of what our sixth form can provide. However, just to, hopefully you are aware that in the coming, in the next year or so, there is a designated brand new build being built, which will include a designated area for sixth form students. So we can provide real high quality education as our sixth form consistently does provide, but we can also match other schools in the area, such as the Falston, with a brand new uh, state of the art building specifically designed with a sixth form area to allow independent study and maximize the sixth form experience for born and grammar students. That's gonna be coming over the next year. So over the next two years, we've already talked about this VESPA mindset. You need to try and make sure that you've got a vision, that your effort and your systems and your practice are of the highest quality. So give yourself the best chance of doing well at GCSE. So there's some advice there. Listen to the advice that was given by your staff, by uh, your, your heads of department, by your, uh, your colleagues in your classes who have learned from mistakes in the, in the past and come with a positive and an honest mindset. Look at what went well. What were the systems in place that made you achieve in certain topics? Reflect on what didn't go so well. What could you do differently to start to um, close up the gap and maximise every opportunity you have to extend your knowledge and achieve as positively as you can? And the biggest bit of advice is to start today. Start at the beginning of year 10. As we said at the start, the linear course does not allow for areas of coasting or time periods where you're, you're, you're getting a three or a four out of 10 in terms of your effort. If you consistently look at sixes and above, that's gonna get the best possible chance over the next 18 months to maximize your future and your decision-making in terms of what goes on uh, after GCSE. So that's gonna be really, really important to start now and look at this approach. So in terms of expectations, what we're looking for is you will be set and you are being set homework every night. Right? So most nights you will have some sort of homework set. You can access that on Google Classroom. Parents can keep on top of that via Google Classroom to see what, what work is set. 
and what the deadlines are. We are trying to get you to become more independent, to consolidate previous learning and use this to push on for further learning. As we talked about, again, that VESPA mindset, making sure you're organized, you have applicable systems in place to generate a positive attitude and to make sure that you give the best possible chance to revise and rehearse and look at exam technique by practicing against past paper questions, for example. So that does rely on a triangulation effect. So we're looking for impact and effort and motivation from students. You also get that from your teaching staff and the support from staff. But that third element of support from home is absolutely vital, where hopefully parents can support their sons by accessing opportunities to provide uh, systems in place and time in place for revision and methodology in order to practice, practice and practice and consolidate the previous learning and push on for, for the, the next phase of learning. So the element of triangulation is really, really important. Edulink will be a real big asset where we as a school can communicate with home and can communicate with students. Google Classroom is a real uh, positive bit of software that, again, uh, emphasizes this, this element of triangulation where uh, you at home can be on top of and understand what is going on uh, in and outside of school for your, for your son's uh, progress within their GCSE subjects. As we said there, this, this is a triangulation approach, and what we're looking for is this element of intrinsic uh, link between parents, students, and teachers. And that's going to start to push you on right, to looking at where your courses can take you and hopefully see where the, the outcomes can take you in terms of the, the, the world of work in future years uh, with that element of triangulation and this relationship that we have between students, parents, and teachers. And one of the last things to say about this is the importance of attendance. So what we'll be looking for is consistent attendance to school, minimum of a 96% attendance across that year. So a half a day of lessons missed every two weeks will total to two whole weeks missed throughout the year. So 1% improvement in attendance could, can actually see a 5 to 6% improvement in attainment. So how does that look in terms of numerical value? So if you're looking at that diagram there, effectively, what we're suggesting is that if you have 100% attendance, 47% of the people who have 100% attendance will actually come out with grades 7 to 9 at GCSE. If your attendance is between 95 and 100% throughout your GCSE years, then 40% of those people will come out with grades 7 to 9 at GCSE. But if your attendance is below 90% for over, uh, for, the, for the 18 months in years 10 and year 11, only 12% of those people who have 90%, below 90% attendance will come out with a grade 7 to 9. So that just shows, actually, the importance of being at school uh, and maximising your punctuality in school, uh, being on time for lessons and extracting every single second out of a lesson is fundamentally important to the projection of the outcomes at GCSE level. So to finish off, there are some key dates for pupils and parents to be aware of. So on Friday the 15th of October, myself as head of Year 10, Mrs Brooker as head of Key Stage 4, will be uh, inviting parents to come in for a, a GCSE clinic. Right, so that can take place on Friday and the details of which will be given uh, in a little while. So there was also the parents evening uh, in 2022, F Thursday the 17th of March is the parents evening for year 10. Audits will be issued this academic year on the 22nd of October, the 11th of March and the 27th of May, which will give you a projection and looking at where your son sits in terms of their current assessment level uh, in relation to the, the numbers and the final projections at GCSE. And there's gonna be something called wrap meetings, which is gonna be invitation only from Mrs. Brooker, starting in term two after that first audit. So there's some elements that we would encourage people to access at home, online resources that can really help um, consolidate existing knowledge. Things such as GCSE pod, GCSE pod is a video software that the school has, and more information will be coming soon about how to access GCSE pod. CGP books, revision guides, for example, Seneca Learning, online interactive resources that can be accessed at home to test knowledge and to consolidate information and knowledge about what has been taught within school. So all we're going to ask is that, as we said, we have this VESPA mindset where people have a vision, have effort and systems in place to be the best pupils that you can be. Aim high, try hard, 
be consistent with your effort and your application and ask questions and ask for advice where you are unsure of something or you feel that you can improve in an area of your course. So the GCC clinic that will be running on Friday the 15th of October will run from 9.05 to 10.20 a.m. And that will be for year 10 with myself and Mrs. Brooker. But Mr. Finch is also running one alongside for year 11. But for year 10, it will be for, with myself and Mrs. Brooker on Friday the 15th of October. So that can be booked either in person in school or a virtual Google Meet can be arranged uh, via Mrs. Bateman, the head teacher's PA. So if you would like to discuss general GCSE questions, and I want to stress here, this is not specific feedback for how your son is getting on in a specific subject or where he's lying in terms of his, his data in comparison with other students. This is for the general approach for GCSEs uh, overall. So if you would like to access that, you can contact the head teacher's PA on lbateman at bordengrammar.kent.sch. And I look forward to seeing some of you uh, next, next Friday uh, when this is released. Thank you very much for your time. I really hope that's been useful. Any questions, please get in touch with us and, and please access that GCC clinic if you'd wish to. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.